180 and subtract it. So x equals minus the 116. And I get 64, I believe. So if this is 64, then wait a minute. If I already know that one's 64 and that's 90, then this has to be 26. So do I have two angles on each triangle that are congruent? I do. So they are, con or sorry, they are now similar. So yes, similar, better spell it right. And by a, a triangle, C, D, E, remember it doesn't matter how I say the first two, are similar to, try them now, watch how we do these letters. C went with 26, so K goes with 26. D was the 90, so G is the 90. And then E was the 64 here, so H is the 64 there. And this is your answer. That's what we proved it with. Ooh, so that's all we have to do for whenever it says explain your reasoning. Yeah. You just say by angle, angle on this one, because that's our lesson is by, we have two angles that are the same, so it's angle, angle. And don't forget, the moment we know this, we know similar, we do know this. A fraction will equal a fraction with the sides that we'll move to in just a minute. But, Ms. Shirley, do we have any sides on these pictures? No, nope, there's nope. no sides given. But so if we, we did have We that. won't need that on this problem. I'm just saying, don't forget about it. That's good. I just have to, you guys get confused on sides versus angles. Okay, show that the two triangles are similar. Okay, so we've got ABE, which is this little one, and ACD. So remember what we do with this picture. We're going to split it apart because it's a smaller triangle inside a big triangle. So I've got ABE, ABE, and I've got 52 degrees in that one. And then I've got ACD, ACD, and I also have, oh, I should probably label these A, C, D, and I have 52 degrees in this one. Okay, right now, I'm going to say we don't have to figure out any sort of math because if you look, B and C are exactly the same angle, so those are congruent. And then what do we know about angle A? It was the sh it's a shared angle in this picture, which means when we split the triangles apart, the angle is still the same. So we've got A is the same as A. So this is another way to write it. If you see on two pictures that we've got, even though we don't have an angle measure, it shows that they're congruent, and then we have the exact same angle measure, we know that they're similar because of angle angle. Do we have to write a statement? Nope, nope, we just showed it. Okay, well, I have to show that these two triangles are going to be congruent. Well, the only way we know right now to prove it is by angle, angle. So I've got to be able to mark some things on here to prove that. Well, the markings that I see that will work are parallel. So I therefore know that I have alternate interior angles congruent. So I can mark this one and I can mark this one. Okay? I could have marked this one and I could have marked that one as well. But the other one I'm going to mark right now is my vertical angles because those are always going to be congruent when two lines cross. So I'm going to mark them, notice, with two markings to show that they are different. And now do I have angle, angle here? Yes, and I have the same angle, angle here. Therefore, my statements are true. Let's just make sure that the letters do match up though. So yes, by angle, angle, and now let's make sure they match up. S had nothing, so my U better have nothing. It does. My B has two marks. My B has two marks. My R has one mark. My T has one mark, so it did work. It did work just like Ms. Perez's, okay? Okay, same thing. We're going to show that the triangles are similar, and we're going to write a statement on this one. Okay, so I've got F, G, H, and R, Q, S. Okay, so cool thing is all of the angles are, they all have only one angle mark. So guess what? They're all the same. So we have at least two angles that are the same. 
So that was so easy. What kind of triangles were those? You guys all remember? Equilateral? Equilateral and equal angular. Meaning they are going to be similar and they are, um, they're really, all the angles are exactly the same, but the one picture you can tell is smaller than the other one. So it's pretty cool. Those are equal angular and equal lateral pictures. Yeah. Cool. Okay, yes by AA, so our similarity triangle. The cool thing about this is it doesn't matter how we order the angles at all because all of them match up. Does that make sense? So I could say, like I'm going to say triangle GHF is similar to triangle, and I'm just going to say QSR to be fun because they all match because they all have the same angle. And what's interesting about this one is you can tell this one's smaller. So like, let's let's pretend that this was four. Well, then this one's four, this one's four. But then let's say this one was eight. Well, this one's eight and that one's eight. That's what makes them similar to each other. The sides are proportional. So that's kind of what I was getting at when we do the fraction equals a fraction thing. This one's a little bit different. It might be easier for us if we pulled these pictures apart. So I'll show you what I would do on this one. So D, E, F. D, E, F, D, E, F is this one right over here. And I'm just going to draw it exactly the way it looks. D, E, F. Now watch, I'm going to put a 90. I'm going to put 58 in here. That means I can go find that one up there. And I'll do that in just a second. <coughs> and then triangle um, D, E, F. That's the one I drew. And then we're going to do C, D, F. C, D, F. And I'm going to draw that one the same way it looks. Now, you can tell that these pictures don't look similar right now. That's because one's flipped over, one's turned. Well, we're going to go back to kind of my picture that I was doing right here. Do you remember? They were pulled apart. They were flipped over and turned. This is basically what I'm going to do. I've got to find the angles real quick to determine whether or not they're going to work. So... I need to subtract 32 from 90 and see what I get. That's going to give me, what is it, 58? Yeah. So 90 minus 32 is 58. So 58 is right there. Well, 58 is in this one. And if 58 and 90 is in this one, and 58 and 90 is in this one, well, then, you guys, that's, this has to be 32. Now, I only needed two of them, and you can see that I have it. So now we need to make sure that we can write a statement correctly. So now let me put my letters on this one because I didn't. So this was 58 off of this triangle. This is the, uh, the one that it was right here, D. And this is F. And this is C. Now I can finish my statement. Now this will matter. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this first one the way they did. Triangle C, D, F similar to triangle. Now we've got to name these letters correctly. C, C is right here, and C went with 32, so D. And it might even match up the letters, I think it nice. does. D on this one, so it's C, D, so D was 58, so E on this one, and you can see that it did. It went right with it, because then the F is the 90, and the F is the 90, okay? And so this is yes, again, by angle, angle. And that is our statement, just like this is our statement. Okay? And it works out. Now we're going to get into why these problems are so important. Okay, so flagpole casts a shadow that is 50 feet long. Okay, right now I'm going to start labeling my picture. And you know what? I love their cute drawings, but I'm just going to draw my own triangle because even though they have a picture already, it's just easier for me if my triangle looks like the triangles that we've been using already in the lesson. So I've got a flagpole, right? There's my one side. So I'm going to draw my flagpole. I'm going to draw right here. And it casts a shadow. Remember, shadows are on the ground. So you can even see it in this picture, right? So that shadow, that was a curvy line. 50 feet. Okay, I've got that already. At the same time, a woman standing nearby who is five feet, four inches tall, she's taller than me, by the way. So she's over here, she's standing nearby, there's my woman. And she is 
five feet four inches tall casts a shadow that is 40 inches long okay so her shadow you can see it right there again on the ground and that's 40 inches long okay our question is how tall is the flagpole to the nearest foot okay we've got a couple of issues here the first issue is it wants our answer in feet and we have feet in the flagpole and with the woman over here, we've got feet and inches. So we're gonna have to do some conversion here. The second thing we have to remember, like Mr. Lee said, is if we've got two pictures or two triangles that are similar, it also means that the sides are proportional. So then we're going to use fraction equal to fraction. So just keep that in mind. And we are dealing with sides. The only angle that we know probably is that these are 90, okay? Know that these are little right angles. It doesn't really tell us, but when you've got an object in its shadow, it's going to be 90 degrees. Especially when, when they put flagpoles in the ground, they're perpendicular to the ground. Yeah. When somebody's standing straight up like we are, we are perpendicular to the ground, so we make a 90 where our feet are. So it's for sure 90. Well, so where's the triangle? Oh, yeah. So right now I just have two lines. But we can connect the top of the flagpole to the bottom of its shadow. Because the sun is shooting those rays. Oh, yeah. The sun shoots the rays at the exact same angle to make the shadow. And that place. creates our second angle. That's cool. Here's the sun over here. It's blue sun. Okay. <clears throat> so. I've got my two triangles and I want to figure out how tall the flagpole is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this X to figure this out. But like I said, we can't compare anything unless everything is in the same unit. So the best way to do that is to make everything smaller. So I've got feet and I've got inches. What's smaller than out of feet and inches? Inches are smaller. Let me draw my X better. So I'm going to change everything into inches. So if I have somebody who's five feet, four inches, okay, I already have the four in inches, so I just have to change the five feet to inches. Well, how many inches are in a foot? Twelve. Twelve. So we've got twelve, and I'm going to multiply it by my five feet, and that's going to give me sixty. Sixty. So I've got sixty inches. So she's sixty inches, four inches tall. We add those. So 60 inches plus 4 inches is going to give us 64 inches, okay? So instead of 5 feet 4 inches, I'm just going to erase, oh, I moved the whole thing. Okay, I'm going to erase that and I'm going to say 64 inches. So now this triangle is all in inches. So what I have to do is I have to go change this to inches. 50 feet is going to be a lot of inches. Remember how many inches are in a foot? 12. So we go 12 times 50 because we're going to a smaller thing and that is going to give me 600. Yep. Yes. I'm working on my mental map. Okay, so that's 600 inches. Okay, now I've got everything in inches that I need. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and find x in inches and then remember ask to the nearest foot so we have to convert it back to feet and we'll do that. Okay, so let's set up a fraction equals a fraction. I'm going to move down a little bit. So I'm going to pick, so in any picture, I'm going to start with my X because it's nice to start with your X. So I started and what's awesome, you guys, is it never matters what you pick first. Yeah. It only it's matters different. what you start picking next. So what it goes with, what it matches to. So this X is the height of the flagpole because that's what we're trying to find. And so that matches with the height of the woman over here, which is 64 inches. So she is 64 inches tall. So X over 64 equals my other fraction. I have to go back to my original picture, which is the flagpole picture. And the only other side that's labeled is 50. So it equals 50. 600. Oh, thank you. It's not 50 because we're talking about inches, kids. 600, because I'm in inches. It is 50 feet, but we're talking about inches. Okay. Good. And 600 goes with 40 inches. So I've got... 40 inches over here. Then I've got my fraction equals a fraction. I can do my, make my x multiply and set them equal to each other. So x times 40 is 40x. 
equals 64 times 600. 38,400. 38,400. And then 40 is multiplied by the x, so I'm going to divide by 40. 960. And so x is 960. Remember what you inches. are we in inches. But our problem wants feet. So in order to get it to feet, we multiplied to get from feet to inches. So to get from inches to feet, we're going to divide. And how many inches are in a foot? So we're going to divide by 12 to get our feet. And that's 80. And so the flagpole is 80 feet tall. Isn't that fun? You guys, that's pretty cool that we didn't even have to measure that. We didn't have to put a tape measure on top and pull it to the ground and measure it that way. We did it by using similar triangles. And that's the whole gist of why we do and learn about similarity is because then you can use that information to find out things that would be, that would be really hard to get a tape up there. You'd have to get a huge ladder mm -hmm. and it would just, I mean, it would be a lot harder than what we just did. So it works out using similarity. Okay, here's our exit ticket. One triangle has an angle of 18 and 96 degrees. So wait a minute, we don't have any pictures. So what should we do? We should always draw pictures when you don't have pictures. And if you don't it have a piece of paper, matters. go get a piece of paper and draw this with us. It never, ever, ever matters what they look like. Nope. Just draw one and then draw another one that's kind of like it, but just smaller. Okay? It says in one triangle, there's angles of 96 degrees and 18 degrees. Now, I know that doesn't quite look like 18. It doesn't matter. It's just you've got two pictures that are similar. Okay? Well, we're going to find out if they're similar. On the second triangle, we have angles of 56 and 96. So I'm putting the 96s in the same spot. I'm putting the 15, 56 and the 18 in different spots. And now we're going to go find the other angles because we know that triangles add up to how much? 180. 180. So I'm going to go 96 plus 18. And I'm going to take 180 and subtract 114. And this one's 66 then, because I went 180 minus 18 and minus 96. 66 is what I got, and that's where it went. I'm going to do the same thing over here, okay? 96 plus 56 and minus 180. But folks, did we get it? Are the triangles similar? Because we went 180... Minus 96, minus 56, and we got 28 on this one. Let's do some Megan Trainer. My name is, no, my number is, no, my sign is, no. You need to let it so go. So will they be similar? No, because we only have one angle that matches up exactly, so the two triangles cannot be similar because they do not match the angle angle. No, not similar. Because you have to have two angles that are the same, and we only have one. Only one angle matched up. And that's it. So if they don't have at least two angles in both triangles, they do not work. Let me throw one more thing at you. You guys ready? Miss Perez, can these two shapes be similar by angle angle? Hmm, that's so interesting because look, we've got one angle and one angle that are marked the same, and then we have two angles and two angles. So I think so. Are you sure? Wait, no, because this lesson is only about triangles. And are those triangles? Nope. They are not, those are quadrilaterals. Not similar. Can't tell by angle, angle, because we're only talking about triangles. That's it. Okay, we'll see you guys later. We love you. Good luck. Please we'll call us. Bye. <laughs>